What's going on guys? Going to try something a little bit different uh, with this video, maybe a little bit of an experiment if you will. And uh, hopefully you're not looking up my nose too much as this uh, tripod's a little on the short side. But I uh, wanted to try having a little bit of face time on this video. Uh, I know it's not normally something that I do uh, on my videos. And uh, there's not so much of a reason for that. Uh, you know, it's not that I'm camera shy or uh, I'm trying to protect an identity or anything like that. Uh, really, it's just not usually that pertinent to what I'm trying to share with you guys. So, you know, I just don't do it. Uh, now, that being said, I've kind of been thinking about it a little bit. And uh, personally, I do enjoy uh, seeing the guys behind the camera uh, who are making their channels, uh, especially the ones that I follow and watch regularly. Uh, you know, it's nice to see uh, the guys behind it and, uh, you know, kind of feel like you're getting to know them a little bit and, uh, you know, feel like they're talking to you and not just at a camera or a microphone. So uh, I'm going to see if I can maybe follow suit a little bit, uh, maybe see what you guys think about that. And uh, by all means, uh, do let me know what you think. Uh, if it's something you like, don't like, couldn't care less about, uh, you know, I suppose I can uh, act accordingly. And uh, if I lose a bunch of subscribers and get a bunch of thumbs down after showing my mug on this video, uh, I guess I'll take that as a hint as well. But uh, in all seriousness, I would like to uh, kind of personalize things a little bit more and, uh, you know, not be so impersonal, just showing, you know, the machines and the tools and the knives and the projects. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if I can... Uh, you know, help you guys get to know me a little bit better and maybe get to know some of you at the same time. Uh, I would like to uh, kind of help create uh, and grow some dialogue. And uh, for what it's worth, I do uh, really enjoy the comments, the feedback, uh, the questions, and little mini conversations uh, with you guys uh, from time to time with certain videos. And uh, like I say, if I can encourage that uh, to happen a little bit more often, uh, maybe by... Uh, being a little bit more personal with things, uh, I'd certainly like to try that. So, again, a little bit of an experiment, something different. Uh, we'll see how it goes, and uh, maybe we can incorporate this uh, into some more videos in the future. Now, uh, the other reason I wanted to fire up the camera uh, is twofold. I wanted to show you a project uh, that I was working on tonight. And uh, even more so, I want to recommend a channel to you guys that you may or may not already be aware or subscribe to. And uh, if you're like me and you got some machines in your shop uh, and are interested at all in home shop machining and, uh, you know, the general hobby, uh, you probably follow uh, quite a few guys on YouTube. Uh, this may be one of them. But uh, one channel that I really enjoy watching and really get a lot from is called Metal Tips and Tricks with Dale Derry. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things I like about the channel. It seems like he's got a little bit of everything, uh, or at least is getting to that point. And, uh, you know, he's got everything from projects to educational videos about machines, tools, accessories, uh, you name it. You know, pretty much every video he puts out, uh, I think, has some value to it and uh, has something uh, that I take away from and uh, learn from it. And uh, he's got a really good knack, uh, I think, with teaching and uh, laying things out uh, very simply and straightforward. Uh, whether you're a beginner uh, that's really never had any experience with what he's talking about, uh, to even a more intermediate or advanced, uh, you know, knowledge of the subject. Uh, like I said, I think he's got a little bit of something for everybody and really does a good job with his content and laying things out and, uh, you know, teaching people. So uh, if you're not familiar with that channel or not subscribed, I uh, really want to recommend that to you guys. And, uh, you know, based on a couple of videos he recently uploaded, uh, I wanted to get out in the shop tonight and uh, kind of follow suit with a project uh, that he shows how to do. And uh, that is making a drill adapter for your uh, knee mill crank. And uh, I got my mill in the background here. It is an import. Uh, it's more or less a Bridgeport clone. Uh, some parts are interchangeable. Some parts are a little bit different or take some adapting. Uh, but for the most part, it is uh, you know an import machine or a Bridgeport clone. 
And, uh, you know, like any Nemo, uh, it does have a knee crank with it. And mine actually didn't come with one. I got mine off of eBay. Uh, and I think this is originally for either a Bridgeport or, you know, import clones. Uh, but it, it's pretty much your standard crank. It's got the nine nubs uh, milled out kind of in a tapered fashion there uh, that mates up with the female side of things. And, uh, you know, there's probably not too many people uh, that own a mill that really enjoy getting use out of this thing. Uh, especially if you got to raise your table, you know, several inches up or down. Uh, you can really spend a lot of time and a lot of energy cranking this thing up and down. And uh, not that it's the end of the world or, you know, the hardest thing to do. But, you know, it does take some time. It does take some effort. And, uh... I know pretty much anybody would prefer to have a power feed on it, but uh, those can be expensive and pretty cost prohibitive. Uh, I think the cheapest uh, import model I've seen is about $300, maybe $250. Uh, they get all the way up to $700 or $1,000 or more uh, for a decent uh, power feed uh, that'll last you any amount of time. And... Uh, you know, that is certainly an option. It is probably more convenient. But uh, another uh, very well-liked method is uh, drill adapters. And uh, you can get those on eBay uh, and other supply stores, I suppose. Uh, they're about $30, $40, uh, maybe a little more, a little less. And, uh, you know, certainly worth it for what they are. And, uh, you know, if your time's worth anything, you know, most people would probably rather just buy one. But uh, I've got other things I'd like to spend uh, even that small amount of money on. And uh, I just happen to have the extra time right now. So, uh, you know, after watching Dale's video, I decided to come out here see if I couldn't make one uh, myself. So I followed things pretty much as he laid them out, although I did a couple things uh, a little bit differently. Uh, started out, uh, you know, he, he did his, I think, at a final diameter of an inch and five-eighths uh, on the larger part. Uh, I actually started off at a piece that was already to that dimension, so I took it down a little bit less than that. And, uh, you know, the diameter's not super critical, a little more, a little less. Uh, mine just happens to start out at an inch and five-eighths. But, uh, like I say, a little more, a little less uh, really doesn't matter. And then uh, he used brass pins that he soldered in. Uh, I had some stainless 316 pin stock uh, that I just uh, reamed all these holes for 316 and uh, kind of did a press fit with some super glue, uh, some Loctite. Uh, it's not an interference fit. Uh, you know, without the glue, I could have pulled these out somewhat easily. But uh, I don't think they'll ever be going anywhere. If they do, I'll just glue them back in. Uh, I could probably clean them up a little bit where I trimmed them down on the lathe. But uh, other than that, uh, I think it came out pretty good uh, as far as these dimensions you know i didn't really follow anything uh he kind of had some measurements and stuff i think he uh called out but i just kind of eyeballed it made this about a half inch which fits my uh, battery drill there uh, made sure that this was enough material that the 5 8 bore uh, wasn't going to be a problem and uh, really it's a pretty simple piece uh, it did take me a couple hours uh, just because my lathe is a little bit underpowered uh, it's only a three-quarter horse motor, and uh, you really can't hog material off of something like this very much, and obviously that's a lot of material to remove uh, from an inch and five-eighths down to a half inch. Uh, really need to beef up that motor a little bit, uh, maybe upgrade it, but, you know, that's kind of its own can of worms. So that'll be another project for another day, but, uh, you know, a couple hours... Uh, Kind of feathering this down, uh, this is what I ended up with. And uh, one thing I did do differently, he showed a method where he put some paint on, uh, you know, the opposite piece for this uh, to mark where the holes go. Uh, I actually used AutoCAD, using an array. Uh, just took a few seconds, you know, draw a couple circles. This one's 5 eighths, inch and 5 eighths, 3 sixteenths. Uh, and then an array to have nine of these. I put little cross hatches in the middle to uh, 
locate my center punch and uh, I just cut that out and glued it on the face of this and uh, punched those out drilled them uh, it was pretty straightforward and uh, probably one of the easier parts of this project uh, you know that's one method his method is just as good uh, if anybody wants to see how to do an array uh, in AutoCAD I'm sure there's a bunch of videos on YouTube but uh, leave a comment below I've got AutoCAD 2000 and uh, you know I'm sure it's about the same on any of them I can make a quick video on that but uh, again this is what I ended up with this is just some cold roll uh, probably 1018 or something but uh, fits in the drill pretty nicely there uh, looks like it was made for it huh and uh, it actually fits really well Let's see if I can get that all in frame uh, it fits really nicely in there uh, that paper template worked out really well there's a little bit of you know side to side movement just because of the diameter of the pins and that's fine uh, you actually probably want that but uh, as you can see and you can even slow that down if your battery starts getting low or maybe you can't oh I already was slow okay so uh, yeah it doesn't work too much in the high gear but uh, low gear works just fine and uh, I'll actually raise that back up a little bit. And uh, I probably want to get a dedicated drill uh, just to leave over here for that. Uh, as I use this elsewhere quite a bit. But uh, as you can see, uh, it works as designed. And, uh, you know, to get out here, spend a couple hours uh, just relaxing on the shop making something cool as uh, Dale would say on the channel uh, you know I really enjoyed it uh, I do want to thank Dale uh, for that video I don't know if he'll ever watch this but uh, at any rate uh, you know there it is uh, hopefully uh, if you guys need one uh, this will inspire you to make one for yourself uh, definitely check out those videos uh, I'll see if maybe I can link them uh, in the description after this uploads and uh, definitely check out that channel uh, if you haven't already so uh, we'll see you guys